I'd like to invite the Ocean Race Chairman, Richard Bricius, back to the stage alongside Necton Mission Science and Knowledge Exchange Program Manager, Sheena Talma, and also scientist, and Philippe Michaud, who is a consultant with the Seychelles Ministry of Fisheries and the Blue Economy, as well as Todd McGuire, who is the Managing Director of 11th Hour Racing, who are actually also our premier partner of the Ocean Race and founding partner of the Race's Sustainability Program. Please welcome them to the stage. <laughs> We're going to finish with your individual reflections, and, and Sheena, we'd love to hear from you first. What, what are your thoughts? You know, Seychelles has shared so many success stories, right? It's, it's a privilege to say you're Seychellois, because you can be like, yeah, we're those guys that did the death swap, right? Yes. <laughs> but our job is never done. I think that is the important um, part. Our job is never done. We never get to say that we've done enough and that you can now take the baton. Because this is a war, right? It's a war for our ocean, for our own survival. So we have to continue. We have to have bigger ambitions. I think that's one of the, the things that drives me as a scientist. The second point is the fact that we need an emotional attachment to the ocean. If we don't care about what's out there, by not understanding it, by not having the privilege to have the resources so that, that you know, the health of the ocean is important to us. If we cannot instigate that emotional response to care about the ocean, then we are in trouble. I think one of the most important things is being able to create that emotion from other people to relearn the relationship that we have with the ocean. And I think um, Nainoa Thompson, he is amazing. I've, I've heard him speak once. Um, and he said that as well. How do we relearn that connection? Whether it's through culture, whether it's through music, whether it's through science, but we have to do that. Our survival, as many of you have said, depends on it. And lastly, we do talk, we have lots of meetings, and I love it because we get to speak to each other, we get to know big ideas, but that is not enough. We have to go back and action the points that we say we're gonna action. I do not wanna look back in the next 10 years and say, wow, did we have a beautiful earth? Just like in the movie, uh, don't look up, right? <laughs> yeah. I think that phrase at the end of that movie was really powerful because we do have something beautiful. We have something irreplaceable, but we're not looking after it like we should. So those are my reflections. I hope um, you all you know, have similar reflections and ask yourselves what I can do to further the, the health of our ocean for our own survival. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sheena. Excellent. Philippe, what are your reflections of the day? Uh, I would like to, to highlight uh, the crucial importance of uh, transparency and participation towards the protection and governance of uh, the oceans, in particular concerning marine fisheries. This is why Seychelles is the first country in the world to have published a transparency report for the Fisheries Transparency Initiative. FITI was started under, the, uh, under President uh, Faux when he was president at the time, and it's received great support from the new president, uh, the President uh, Rangpalawan, which is great. Uh, this initiative covers 12 transparency requirements, foreign fishing agreements, state of the fisheries resources, fisheries law, enforcement activities, subsidies, etc. This is what makes the FITI so unique and at the same time so valuable for a country like Seychelles. It truly embraces the sustainability of fisheries, that is, information on whether fisheries are environmentally friendly, economically viable, and socially equitable. And through our collaboration with the FITI, who is the international Secretariat is hosted here, our government is making such information now available to all. 
Reporting is one thing, but what is required is participation, and with it comes ownership of the year process. This is done by a multi-stakeholder group consisting of industry, civil society, and government. We even have parliamentarians representing both the government and the opposition. I believe that this process has improved democratic governance and accountability of our fisheries sector, and it has stimulated more public debate. Finally, I would like to say that the ocean we want is the ocean that all should benefit from. It can be for economic value, food security, pleasure, human and environmental well-being. For this to happen, transparency and participation are essential. And there is clearly a momentum for more transparency in fisheries. There are now seven countries participating in this initiative, including Cabo Verde and recently uh, Ecuador. So let me close by expressing my hope that this Ocean Race Summit will gather support and send a clear signal for the need for transparency in fisheries, not just to counter illegal fishing, but for supporting the overall sustainability of this sector. It is past the 11th hour for our ocean. We must act now, we must race now, and the FITI offers a proven internationally recognized framework to enhance transparency in fisheries. And we're very happy to share our experiences with other countries. Thank you very much. Excellent, thank you, Philippe. We certainly need more transparency in our fisheries and conservation in general, so thank you. Excellent. Todd, coming back to you, what are some of your reflections of the day? Yeah, I, I think my, if, if I had to sum it up with one word, I would say opportunity. Um, and I think opportunity comes from uh, a few things. You know, the first thing actually, I, I, I would, Oliver mentioned it, Oliver from Necton mentioned it earlier, was we need to be doing things in a different way. And I, I think by being here, all of us actually are starting to do things in a different way. Because what we're, what we're trying to do, or what we're accomplishing with the summits, is to connect sport, athletes, science, policymakers, governments, media, NGOs together in this effort to uh, create a universal declaration of ocean rights. So by doing that, by ha hosting these summits, and you mentioned before, this is the 13th summit that's been hosted since 2015, um, we're able to bring that message and all the great work that's being done by you know, the scientists and the policies that are being enacted um, to, the, to the global audience. So as the race goes around the world and goes to each continent and each stopover, we're sharing the work that's being done here in Seychelles. And we want to partner with everybody that's here in telling that message. So as, you know, uh, as new policies are enacted or you know, best practices are shared, we want you to, to continue to partner with us as we continue on the Ocean Race Summit Series. Awesome, thank you, Todd. And finally, Richard Brissius, welcome back. Thank what are you. your reflections from the summit well, today? Well, I think the reflections that uh, Philippe and Sheen and, and Todd have done are bringing it all together in a, in a very good way. So thank you for that. And I think for me, being with the, all of you here today, it's, uh, it's outstanding both to experience the expertise, but above also the commitment and the determination. and and the, this resilience that is so important. And I know that from being an ocean racer, as I said in the beginning, that that's a very important quality if you want to, to achieve the great things in life. And, and I'm, I'm looking at you, Peter, because I've had the opportunity to work with you for three years now. And, and you might see this as the ambassador of the sea coming here, uh, parachuted down and moving on to the next thing. But, but you are resilience pers personified in this uh, system of helping the ocean. So bravo, Peter. And, and I know for all of you, when you are here and you pass this Peace Park in Victoria and you see Nelson Mandela there with his fist up in the air, remember what he said, and he was a resilient man, that the greatest glory of living lies not in never falling, but in rising every time you fall. 
And that mindset is what we need because we know it's a tedious process, especially in creating policy, it's tedious. And Sheena, you, was, you were on to this as well. So, so keep, on, keep on staying resilient. You have it in you. And, and, and another great takeaway here today, I think, was uh, the power of women. And I was fortunate to lead this Team SCA that you saw the video of uh, Ad, uh, Abby, Abby, Abby talking about. And uh, it was the greatest experience of my life. We had 40, 400 women from across the world applying for these 14 positions. And I, I admit I had to change a lot of preconceived ideas for the better, and, and uh, I think the world is very fortunate for the, we are not there yet, but the, 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 the fact that now we have a more equality across the world, but there's plenty of roads still to go, but that, that's the, to the benefit of the ocean and the benefit of the world. And then the one, one idea I picked up, which was from Oliver, when you said, let's get the, the belief systems more engaged. And uh, I think that's a wonderful idea. And I think they already got it, because in the book, the most published book in the world, the Bible, it has it on its first page, right? On day one, it was all water. On day four, the waves were created. And on day six, that's when we rocked up. So at least they have the, the manifesto ready there on page one. So <laughs> let's, let's push for that, Oliver. And, and, and then, if, to me, it was a great, because we push for ocean rights, and we believe in, in the need for a proper rule book for the oceans. And Dr. Harriet Davis, she, she summed it up, and she said, we need to take away the motion of our right to use the ocean, and to instill the notion of becoming the custodian of the use of the oceans. So we, and that's an important mind shift. I think most are still in the on the position of believing we have the right to use the ocean. Excellent. Thank, Thank you, you, Richard. <laughs> so our final speaker of the day, who we're very pleased to invite back to the stage, is UN Secretary General Special Envoy for the Ocean, Ambassador Thompson. Ambassador Thompson, would you join us on stage, please? Uh, a couple of things that stood out for me, the emphasis on gender, you know, as a grandfather of uh, four young girls. I personally don't have any doubts that if they cho choose to go into ocean action uh, careers, that they, they'll face no barriers now. I mean, I think we've knocked those barriers down, whether it's ocean science or whether it's the politics of ocean or, or things like uh, aquaculture. I mean, women are leading the way in all these fields. Uh, I also um, was struck by the, uh, whether it was overtly said or not, uh, it was hit pointing in that direction, of the um, sustainable blue economy. And uh, I emphasize again that you know, this is the future for the next generation, be it their health. You know, only 20% of the ocean's properties are currently known. The other 80% is the pharmaceutical frontier, uh, particularly in the post-antibiotic age. That's going to be very important. Thirdly, nutrition. Um, you know, we're not... We're currently hunters and gatherers when it comes to the ocean, and that's wrong. We've got to become farmers and curators of the ocean. And uh, to me, that's new forms of food. You know, we don't eat what our grandparents ate, and our grandchildren won't eat what we currently eat. Of eating new forms of food. You know, think of marine tofu from uh, phytoplankton farming, that sort of thing. Uh, and um, then, of course, there's the whole energy thing. And you know, ever since I was a kid, got caught in the first undertow. I've kind of understood that, wow, well, there's so much power out here. Why are we burning fossil fuels for our power? When we're talking about uh, you know, currents, waves, just that whole kinetic energy of uh, different uh, temperatures in the sea levels. But then think of um, wind energy as well. We get 100 times the amount of power we need in this, on this planet from the ocean, and yet still we burn our fossil fuels, um, how absurd. Uh, the other thing I just wanted to mention, which came out of the recent part of the discussions, was uh, marine spatial planning. And, you know, we've had this ocean panel, which was put in place uh, by Norway, but was, had 14 heads of government which served on it, uh, still do, in fact, uh, including my own prime minister of Fiji, but 
the people like the President of Indonesia, President of Mexico, President of Chile, Prime Minister of Canada, Prime Minister of Portugal. Uh, you know, these are countries with huge EEZs, 14 of them. Um, in fact, President Biden and President Macron have just joined it. Um, what was their big conclusion after four years of work? It was we need to get the ocean uh, marine spatially planned, basically. They call it sustainable ocean plans. So again, Seychelles is way out there in the lead, and you should be proud of that. Um, all of the 14 heads of government um, have committed to having 100% uh, sustainable ocean plans in place for their EEZs by 2025, and they've encouraged their peers around the world to have the job done for the whole ocean by 2030. So let me conclude by uh, just talking a little bit about Lisbon. It's coming up fast. It's less than 100 days now. Um, I spent my time flying down from Heathrow to Seychelles and pressed the send button here on the waterfront for uh, the proposed list for all the speakers for the interactive dialogues and uh, the moderating of those. Uh, it's going to be so exciting. There are eight interactive dialogues covering ev everything from marine pollution through to ocean science. Uh, and you know what those eight interactive dialogues are. You just need to go to the website to see what they are. It's going to be a packed week. Uh, if you're representing an organization, make sure there's two of you because everything is doubling up. There are so many things to put into that week. I mentioned some special events. There's a youth forum on the Saturday and Sunday beforehand. And uh, it'd be great if you could get some of your youth up there to uh, participate in that. It's going to be uh, a lot of fun for those two days. And in fact, we're taking the, making plans now for the ocean baton to arrive in Lisbon by yacht during the youth forum. Uh, and um, then you've got the Sustainable Blue Economy Investment Forum, which the governments of Portugal and Kenya are hosting on the first day of the conference, on the Monday. That's going to be held at Nova University, about uh, 20 minutes drive from the site of the UN Ocean Conference. And President Farr and President Kenyatta, of course, were the ones who really launched that in November 2018 in uh, Nairobi at that huge conference we had there for the Sustainable Blue Economy. This is a follow-on from that, another high-level gathering. Uh, and then uh, just let me, in passing for the fisheries people here, let you know that uh, FAO have agreed to move forward the release of the SOFIA report. You know, that's the state of the world's fisheries. Uh, it was supposed to be released later, but they've agreed to bring it forward, and that'll be on the third day of the conference, the SOFIA report. It is very important for fisheries. You know, that's where, for example, we get that figure of 34.2% overfished. That was the last SOFIA report. It comes out every two years. So let's see what SOFIA's got to report to us here. And then, of course, there's all the side events, and the, uh, the invitation has just gone out. Have a look on my Twitter account if you want to see it, but I'm sure there's many other ways you can find it, uh, the website for the Ocean Conference, for example, uh, as to how you apply to have a side event. And uh, there's going to be a big tent within the Blue Zone where you can ha hold your side events. I guess that's for free. It's a big room, middle-sized room, small room. But there's also going to be information about all the commercial real estate around the Blue Zone that you can rent. And I know many people who are already starting to do that. So if you've got a burning issue, whatever it is, blue carbon, uh, seaweed, uh, that you really want to impose uh, onto the outcomes of the UN Ocean Conference, and I really encourage you to think about side events. And you've only got till I think, mid-April to apply. So it's a job at hand for anybody that wants to do that. Uh, and uh, you know, as you know, when you go to these COPs in Glasgow and places like that, it's not the plenary that you want to be in to make a difference. It's the carnival outside of side events and displays and all the rest. That's where you're going to pick up your new ideas and find your partnerships that you need to take those ideas forward. So uh, I guess uh, I'll leave you with all that and just say, see you in Lisbon and look forward to it. Thank you so much, Peter. And uh, yes, it's been truly a distinct privilege being here with you all today. I certainly have learned a lot of tremendous ocean knowledge from our speakers and honorable guests. 
Despite the challenges of living in this modern world that we're in today, it's important that we're comforted by the leadership that exists in this space, where more individuals like yourselves, whole communities, and entire nations like Seychelles are willing to step up and speak up for the ocean. This type of dialogue is essential and necessary to pave the pathway for our ocean health and also our collective future and our shared planet. But don't let it stop at just the conversations or the dialogue. It needs to transition into action. So I hope this summit today has been invigorating for you and hopefully spurring lots of ideas of how you as an individual can contribute to this movement. So thank you to the Republic of Seychelles. Thank you to the founding partners of Racing with Purpose Program, 11th Hour Racing Team. Thanks to the Danny Four Foundation. Thank you to the entire Ocean Race Summit's team who has been working effort, like, tirelessly to put this together. And we'd love to invite you to join us for lunch and thank you for attending. Again, my name is Danny Washington and until next time, from all of us with the Ocean Race Summits, we're wishing you and your loved ones health and happiness wherever you are in the world. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.